Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We're gonna be talking Chanel uh, losing brand value in Korea. What happened, Chanel? What happened, Korea? Subscribe to my channel. While you're at it, push the join button next to the subscription button. Um, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together over there as well. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. That means our co-chatters are all here live. Hi, Rich Mitch. <laughs> there will be perfume talk later on, but not right now. But there will be. Don't you fret none. All right. So uh, this is what we're going to be talking about. Chanel losing um, brand value in Korea. Don't mind my voice. It's a little bit still uh, rough because uh, I'm healing from the lockdown syndrome, if you know what I'm... The candy cane hit me. So that's why my voice is kind of um, on and off. And if I do cough up a lung during the video, it's because of that. Okay. So now listen. Um, so a friend of mine sent me this link uh, from the Korea Times uh, about Chanel losing brand value in Korea. And I was like, you know, uh, this is really interesting to me because I know that we, 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 we've all seen these photos back in 2020 and 2021 when Chanel is an, has announced or leaked their price increases, usually we have these pictures coming from Korea, South Korea, obviously, because, you know, could you imagine if Chanel opened a boutique in North Korea? Anyway, shade aside, South Korea, they're all standing in line and like queuing no matter what the weather is. And then like Chanel was accused of not being humane because during the lockdown situation, the P word, which we can't say, People were queuing up all close to each other overnight to get a chance at buying a uh, Timeless Classic before the price increase and what have you. And so it's always these pictures from Korea, but it's not like the price increases were only happening in Korea. They were happening all over the globe. But however, somehow these pictures always arrive from, uh, from South Korea. And and um, interestingly enough, Diet Prada jumped on this. I mean, they're late to the game with everything, really. It's just, oh, God, Diet Prada. Anyway, don't even get me started on Diet Prada, will ya? I might be sick, but I ain't sick enough to not throw shade at Diet Prada, because, girl. But anyway, so they're kind of keep pushing this agenda of Korea and Chanel and Chanel failing in Korea. Okay, girl, let's see. Well, now even the Korean Times are writing an article and what they got to say. They say... Okay, Kim Jae-hung says, Chanel, one of Korean's favorite luxury fashion brands, has seen its status diminishing in recent months due to too many people owning its bags and other items, according to industry and analysts. In the past, not many people owned Chanel items in South Korea. Its products were so expensive that most people would not dare pay the prices being asked for them. However, the average income of people in Korea has gone up somewhat during the last decade, and in particular, the ongoing lockdown has helped them save a bit of money that they otherwise would have spent on traveling abroad, which they are now using to purchase luxury products. In particular, young customers seem to have no qualms about spending thousands of dollars on a luxury item anymore. Uh, some see Chanel bags as an investment asset because the luxury firm has been raising the price for its products quite often, so owners could potentially charge higher resale prices. This situation is leading people to flock to Chanel boutiques in the country every time a rumor spreads online that the French fashion house has been preparing to hike its prices again. This is not the case just in South Korea, you guys. This is happening all over the globe. Uh, when when we start hearing of price hikes, people start flocking to, to the Chanel boutiques. Chanel increased the prices for fashion items four times back in 2020 and 2021. None of its signature classic handbag models are priced lower than 10 million won or $8,343 each. However, there are signs now that Chanel's products are becoming less desirable than they were before. The price of its most popular classic medium flap bag on the local resale market dropped by 1 to 2 million won recently. It was traded for an average of 14 million won until early January on the online resale market Creme, 
but now the price has declined to the 11 million won range. A luxury good is a luxury good when only small number of people own it. When everyone has a Chanel bag in their hands, people will no longer want it so badly, an industry official at a local luxury firm said. Scarcity is of utmost importance for luxury goods. That is why Hermes is only selling its signature Birkin bags to a limited number of VIP customers. This is don't... I'm just like reading to you an article that, um, in my humble opinion, is full of mistakes. Uh, there has been an um, oversupply of Chanel bags on the resale market. More than 70% of the available Chanel bags here have been purchased by resellers from department stores and Chanel boutiques, a local department store official said. Because there are so many Chanel bags available on online resale platforms, the brand's luxury image has gotten tainted. Chanel recently decided not to sell its products to resellers... <laughs> Another mistake. Chanel didn't recently decide not to sell their products to resellers. They never wanted to. It's just really tricky because resellers always find new ways to trick the system. Mm, who visit its stores too often or buy up all the luxury items at once. But that has proven ineffective. A major department store official added. Chanel Korea said that it could not comment on the issue. And of course it can't comment on the issue because... Uh, a lot of stuff is wrong in this article. Uh, first of all, I want to say um, the oversaturation of the market with timeless classic Chanel bags, double flaps, it has been a thing since decades. In recent years, particularly complicated because people just get more and more into it. And I don't think this is an issue just with Korea, but Korea always ends up being a topic of conversation representative of all Asian markets when it comes to Chanel and overspending on Chanel bags and standing in line before price increases. I don't know why that is. It somehow over a year ago, one news report filtered through, I think all of you who are into fashion and luxury remember people with umbrellas in the cold standing outside of a Chanel boutique waiting in line for the boutique to open so that they can get a timeless classic bag before the price increase. And that has stuck with the gossip luxury community for years now. And that's why, you know, Diet Prada, like one year later, they jump on it as well. And now it's like all news again, but it's not news. And um, the fact that the price of Chanel bags on the second hand market fell from 14 million to 11 million or to 12 million won, not a big deal either. Um, what is really a big deal is the fact that Chanel has stopped producing, not fully, but has limited drastically their production of the Timeless Classics. They just have. Even in my boutique, my sales associate told me, Jacob, we just don't get them anymore. We used to get them on a weekly basis. We used to get stock of the Classics in black caviar, lambskin, and beige. Beige once a month, twice a month, the blacks on a weekly basis. Now, since over a month, they got nothing new. And so it's Chanel who stopped producing. Because, not because of South Korea, they don't care. It's because of the whole world. They're just oversaturating the market with their own bags. So... The prices have been pushed to infinity and beyond. And finally, they've done what they should have done years ago. They cut the frickin' production. Thank God. Because I'm saying this because that's the only way to, to counter oversaturation. And also, it's the only way to guarantee better quality. Because if you don't produce 10,000 bags a year, but you just make 1,000, you can make those 1,000 in, in a much better attention to detail and quality oriented uh, manufacturing than if you produce 10,000. So I'm fine with Chanel acting like they have Birkin quality and putting their prices way up there as long as they don't keep producing millions of these bags. Millions of these bags is, uh, and is a high, highly overestimated number, obviously. But now that even my boutique 
is telling me, you know, we're getting no shipments in since a long time. Shows me that they're that Chanel is really paying attention and they're not overproducing anymore. Good for them. Good for them because this is a wonderful bag. And I think not that it I believe it should be limited, but I believe it should have outstanding quality. And if to have outstanding quality, you need to produce only a thousand a year instead of ten thousand a year, then so be it. Then so be it. So I'm really, really looking forward to the new batches, the new batches <laughs> that get produced. You know, to see if they have better quality now. And honestly, that, that's bottom line. I don't think that South Korea is going to be any less infatuated with Chanel now that they have their bags. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> As they say, there's an idiot born every minute. Every second, really. Uh, and there's somebody who changes their mind and all of a sudden wants a Chanel bag born every second too. So somebody who is maybe done with Chanel yesterday, well, somebody new is going to discover it tomorrow. So, um, but for whoever discovers it tomorrow, it's not going to be that easy for them to get the bag in the boutique anymore because they're just not producing as many anymore. So, uh, I'm glad that Chanel is producing less of their timeless classic bags. They are, you know, pushing towards, um, wanting their customers to also buy the seasonal bags. Now, I love quite a few of their seasonal bags, not going to lie. But I don't like the prices because, uh, yes, the seasonal bags have, the price range is kind of half the amount as their Timeless Classics. But it's still way overpriced for what it is. So I don't think their seasonal bags are going to sell that well because... I don't see bags as investments. I always tell you that. Buy it if you love it. But the problem is Chanel is still producing like 9 to 10 collections a year. And so this means that a seasonal bag is literally in fashion only two months. And then already a new collection is out. So that bag will never maintain its price on the secondary market. So if you fall in love with a seasonal Chanel bag... My tip is don't buy it in the boutique. Wait literally six months, sometimes even just four months after its release, and you're going to find it on the secondhand market for like half the price. Because, you know, some bimbo bought it to take a picture on Instagram, and then they have the money, and then they're like bored with the bag because it's not fashionable anymore because the newest collection came out two weeks after. So they're going to sell it off. So this, if you love a, a Chanel seasonal bag, I highly recommend not buying it in the boutique, but buying it secondhand, like wait half a year and get it when, you know, when it's no longer actual. This is if you're buying it because you love it, obviously. Not, not, not if you're buying it because you think you're going to make some weird investment out of it. Because to me, as I said, bags are not investments. That's the journey I recommend. <laughs> The journey. Oh, get my merch, by the way, www.supernakeup.com uh, or on my Amazon shop. That's the journey I recommend is for seasonal Chanel bags, score yourself four to six months after the release of the product secondhand for half the price, sometimes even cheaper. And um, that's for the seasonal Chanel bag because honestly, Chanel cannot maintain those prices. The retail prices that they demand for those bags... Um, in store is just really like four thousand, five thousand dollars for like a bag. Nobody's gonna remember in a year. But if you fall in love with it, who cares if nobody else is gonna remember it? But be clever about it. Wait until somebody resells it half a year later when they when you know when they want their next it bag because they're just running after the craze. But you're running after the quality and the style. So if you love that style, you're gonna love it even ten years from now. Might as well buy it secondhand. Just be sure to get it authenticated properly. So that's it. That's what I wanted to say about this. I love seasonal bags, says Tyler. Uh, but I'd, it'd be ridiculous if you have to buy seasonal stuff to get offered a classic. No, they're not playing those games. I mean, the, not yet, at least. Uh, my sales associate in my boutique said, "No, you you don't need." Uh, purchase history to get it but the problem is now they're not let's say they would they would receive 
just throwing numbers randomly out there. These numbers have nothing to do with reality. Like, let's say they used to receive 20 classics a month. Now they receive one in stock. So what are you going to do? I mean, of course, the sales associates are going to sell the bag to their favorite clients. So to, you automatically start having uh, some sort of history. You need a, a purchase history just so that that sales associate thinks about you. Because anybody can walk in and ask for one and then they might put you on a list. But nobody's guaranteeing you what number you are on the list. So like, let's say if I'm a sales associate and... Um, in one day, I get 10 people asking me for a Timeless Classic in beige. Small, Timeless Classic, beige, gold hardware, caviar leather, the classic. 10 people ask for it. The first five that enter the boutique, so chronologically speaking, ask for it. And I've never worked with them before. They don't have any purchase history with me. And then the sixth person comes in, and that is a loyal customer of mine that's been in shopping with me for five years already and they ask for the same bag <laughs> girl you best believe i'm going to put that person at the top of my list so you see how things then change you know you might be the first person who entered the boutique that day but by the end of the day you might not be at the top of that list there might be somebody coming in ahead of you uh, so it's just going to take longer i think you're still going to be able to get your timeless classic bag, even if you don't have a purchase history, but you're just going to have to wait much longer. And if you have that patience to wait through two more price increases, <laughs> by the time they offer you one, you know, you're going to also have probably two or three price increases uh, on top. So there's that. Um, you know. Tyler says, yep, I, I stay getting my Chanel flaps vintage pre-love. The whole concept of being on season is archaic uh, in some time of sustainability. In this time of sustainability. Eren says, I'm searching these bags only on, on Vestia Collective. Do you have any advice to find on other websites? I do not recommend getting anything on Vestia Collective because just check out my videos on my... YouTube channel, I have uh, listened to people share their experiences, uh, the hell that they went through on Vestia Collective, and I've just heard too many bad stories to want to deal with them. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Diego Gold says, and just like that, Chanel became Hermes, lol. Mm, no, they did not, because they're still... Very, very different brand from Hermes. Uh, the end result is very, very different. Not saying better or worse quality. It's just the aesthetic is very, very different. It appeals to a different type of audience. Um, and thank God that Chanel will never be Hermes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, thumb it up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, subscribe to my channel and never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.